chosen one! Season's greetings and blessed salutations. Welcome to the last ever KKP Rhapsody of 2019. I'm your host to the most, Mr. Tuffy, and we have a lot of hot news and whatnot this week before the end of the year. Honestly, with all the work we've been doing this whole year, we all deserve to take a breather until next month. So let's talk about the highlights of this week before we wrap City Up 2019 in a nice pretty bow and ship it off, shall we? Let's go! Talk about huge winds of change country-wise, while last year's Capcom Cup was Asia-centric, the West is truly won in Capcom Cup 2019. It's America versus America for the Grand Finals, with all of the Asian and Japanese players all but relegated past the top 3. So, who won? It's Laura player Idom, who triumphed against renowned Karin player Punk in the loser's bracket climb to the Grand Finals that's as beautiful as you can get to an underdog rise to glory story. He may not be sponsored then, but he probably will be after this sweet, well-earned victory. Pity we can't say the same about this year's Capcom Cup, because there are a lot of issues going on production-wise, like laggy second player setups, no last chance qualifier streams, and wrong title cards and pictures for certain players. Not even a non-binary Street Fighter 4 boss can make people remove that sour taste from their mouths. Better luck in Capcom Cup 2020, Capcom. Southeast Asian Dota 2 fans are capping the year with one last major tournament happening right now. The One Esports Dota 2 World Pro Invitational Singapore. What could be better than that? How about a Dota 2 major event that takes place before the International 20, which is regarded as the biggest annual tournament for the game? In Singapore? Yeah, that's happening. One Esports has announced the first ever Dota 2 Singapore major scheduled in June 2020. With a prize pool of US 1 million and 15,000 Dota Pro circuit points up for grabs, it's truly a good day to be an esports fan. At Kakucho Parade, we cover all sorts of games, even the mobile ones that have been around for a decade or so. Speaking of which, Subway Surfer is the biggest and most downloaded game of the decade, accumulating 1 billion downloads on Android devices alone. In mid-2018, the game even accumulated more than 2.5 billion downloads. So yeah, this all-ages freemium title is bigger than all your Call of Duties and PlayStation exclusives combined together. What a world we live in. Oh, and if you're curious about this year's top game, it's Garena Free Fire by Downloads and Fate Grand Order by Revenue. The waifu gacha is strong of the latter. Our comics and pop culture guy, Comics Lord, finished watching the Netflix Witches series starring Superman himself, Henry Cavill. It's pretty good. This show's many plus points include great sword fighting choreography, a strong and epic pilot that hits the ground running, standout performances by Henry Cavill and Anya Charlotra as Geralt and Yennefer respectively, and lovely monster designs that use some top-notch practical effects. What it lacks though is a friendly and accessible way to introduce its characters to non-fans of the series and games, a coherent plot structure, and some convincing CGI at some points here and there. <coughs> Magic Forest. But still, we do enjoy a show that lets us fill in the blanks ourselves and sort out its intricate plot lines for repeated viewing. All in all, a solid recommendation from us. Our comics and pop culture guy Comics Lord finished watching Star Wars 9, Rise of Skywalker. It wasn't good. Without going into spoilers, the film feels like two movies crammed into one, part retconning Ryan Johnson's Star Wars 8, part Endgame. It also features no new or meaningful character arcs for the new and old cast, and a lot of leaps in logic even for something as high concept as Star Wars. On the plus side, the film is beautifully shot and scored, with the latter bringing in the feels. But that isn't enough to make this even a decent film. We suspect this 9th entry will be divisive between critics and fans, especially those who enjoyed part 8. As it stands, it's quite a disappointing finish to an otherwise promising bookend to the already worn-out franchise set in a galaxy far, far away. 
And that's it for our last Rhapsody of 2019. Before we take a deep, long slumber until next year, we'd like to say a few words. Thank you to all our million plus viewers for tuning in to our humble little game site and content making shindig. We would also like to give a shout out to the folks who helped us in 2019 to get us to where we are today. We totally appreciate it. And we would especially like to thank the haters too. What was that saying again? What doesn't break you makes you stronger? So keep the comments coming in. We are always up for improving our souls and transcending further into greatness and beyond. Why hate when we can keep doing the best we can to the extent of our abilities? Why be petty amongst each other when we can be friendly rivals? Talking, sharing, and celebrating our hobby while also delivering rightful criticism and opening up thoughtful discussions? We're all on the same boat here when you think about it. Long story short, let's be more tolerant, let's be more forgiving, and let's be more awesome and push forward to 2020. Because that's sounding like an awesome year for games and pop culture. Until then, that's the way 2019 pixelates. Yeah, yeah.